Good evening, my name is Juan Ruiz, and tonight I'll be presenting my report on language and speech disorders and the treatment utilized by speech therapists. First, I will look at some general statistics regarding language disorders. According to the National Institute of Deafness and Other Communication Disorders, between 6 and 8 million people in the United States have some form of language disorders, language and speech disorders. But first, um, I think we need to define what are language disorders and speech disorders. They, uh, these are two different things. So let's look at those two. But first, we're going to be looking at what are speech disorders. Now, speech disorders are defined as the inability to produce speech sounds correctly or fluency. Whereas language disorders are defined as the impairment of the use of speaking and content of language. And at first I thought maybe speech disorders had more to do with uh, the physical aspect of speaking or communication versus language disorders. But um, they both have a combination of the two. Okay. Now... Here are some examples of speech disorders. Now, the first one we're gonna look at really quickly is apraxia. And apraxia is a, a motor disorder caused by damage to the brain. And the following is dysarthia, which is a uh, condition in which the muscles you use for speech are weak or difficult to control. And the one we're probably mo most familiar with is stuttering. And stuttering is a disorder that's, uh, that speech is interrupted by repetitions, blocks, or spasms. And we're pretty familiar with that, especially in the school setting. Now, examples of language disorders are selective mutism. And you'll see this in students who suffer from autism, um, mostly. Now, selective mutism is an anxiety disorder in which a person who is normally capable of speech does not speak. It may be anywhere, it could be a certain situation, it could be in a park or with other students or whomever, or wherever it may be, um, let's consider selective mutism. The second we're looking at, the second language disorder, is aphasia. And aphasia is a partial or total loss of the ability to articulate ideas or comprehend spoken language. And I think you'll see this, I believe, and I have, I've read so many things. It's um, so many research papers uh, this past, you know, these past couple of weeks. But um, you'll see this in older individuals. Um, who suffer from dementia and who have that inability to comprehend speech or create those, uh, articulate their ideas. And you'll see this with individuals who have uh, brain damage as well from an accident or a, a soldier who uh, coming back from being wounded. But anyway, um, And finally, we have there's not we have a, several other examples that we may be familiar with, especially again working in a school setting. Uh, you'll see in the students with autism, dyslexia. Uh, I've actually had one student I taught in the sixth grade up in Philadelphia, uh, a young lady who had a surgery or a cleft palate. And she would visit a speech therapist, I remember. And then, obviously, individuals who suffer from traumatic uh, brain injuries. But now, now I will briefly list several assessments that doctors and speech therapists use to detect language and speech disorders. So we're going to be looking at assessments, what, they, what us doctors and speech therapists use on a regular basis. Now, the first one we're going to look at, uh, we're going to be looking at phonology assessment. That's an assessment that doctors and speech therapists use. Now, now this assessment examines the phon uh, phonological abilities by looking at the error patterns in speech. 
The second is the articulation assessment, which examines the child's ability to produce phonemes or sounds. And then another assessment that doctors and speech therapists use consistently is uh, the inconsistency assessment, which examines a word production. So those are three assessments that doctors and speech therapists use uh, when looking at or assessing any student who may or may not have a language or speech disorder. Now, after doctors and therapists determine the diagnosis of a child, then they look for the appropriate treatments to support uh, those students or children who suffer from a language or speech disorder. So the first treatment we're going to be looking at is it's called a phonological contrast therapy. Now this has is uh, there's three types. The first type you have is a minimal, which we're probably most familiar with because we've looked at this, I believe, in chapter five. I may be wrong, but anyway, uh, the minimal. Uh, contrast test uh, uses pairs of words to have one phoneme that are different or we as learned we learned as being uh, minimal pairs so you uh, for example dog and hog so you looked at uh, the one phoneme being different is d and h so they look at that and and they determine whether or not that uh, by changing the phoneme you can also change the definition of the word the next one is titled maximal or mac, maximal uh, contrast therapy, which is which they focus on speech and the production of sound rather than the placement. So we're looking at sound and how to use it. And then finally, uh, it's a combination of both one and two, the minimal and maximal, which is multiple. So they use both, and I think this is the most common. They use both. Uh, the multiple uses both combined minimal and maximal therapies to um, assist students who this is students or people who suffer from speech or language disorders. Now the next treatment is titled or is called the uh, core vocabulary approach. Now this approach focuses on whole word production and what is interesting about this is that the child teacher, parents, and therapists, they actually all collaborate to develop a list of 50 meaningful words that relate to the child's life. So really interesting, four different people, the child's life, collaborate, child included, they develop four diff uh, 50 different words that they use on a daily basis, and it helps some um, uh, develop and increase word production. And then finally, I think this is uh, by far my favorite and it's titled uh, the final th the non-speech and oral therapy. Now with this therapy, it helps actually uh, helps strengthen the muscles in a child's face to pr help produce those necessary sounds. So um, what type of exercise do they use? They use, um, they pucker the lips, puckering of the lips, blowing, smiling, tongue curling, fa uh, facial massage. And this one, my favorite being uh, students or people who suffer from language or speech disorders, they use, um, they use food and they use the textures of food and taste. And this helps promote awareness of the mouth and tongue. So these are just a few of the language and speech disorders and interventions. Now, obviously, the sooner you detect a child's disorder, the more, more likelihood the child will receive the appropriate services and be successful both in the classroom and society. Um, interesting topic. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much.